Hi everyone, let's the new move Tano here, the internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for a review of the new Mad Lib album, Sound Ancestors. This is a brand new LP from legendary hip-hop producer and rapper Mad Lib, a veteran of the game and prolific artist with numerous classics under his belt, as Quasimodo, or one half of Mad Villain, also working with Freddie Gibbs and numerous releases in his Beat Conductor series. It's been a while since he's dropped a standalone instrumental effort though, and this one I guess has none other than Kieran Hebden or Fortet arranging it, which I'm sure will add an interesting dynamic. And if I had to describe this project in a word, it is dynamic as well as spacious. The overwhelmingly nostalgic warmth that has been a trademark of many Mad Lib releases over the years gets somewhat replaced on this new one with more chilling atmospheres, making these beats feel almost minimal or roomy at points which is sort of a refreshing change of pace for Mad Lib as it does lead to a series of tracks that sound haunting and melancholy, or raw, off-kilter, and experimental. The first leg of this LP presents an incredible run of beats. The call features a smooth, easy-going groove topped with some prominent ride cymbals, and this rhythm houses the most thick, growling bass line I think I've ever heard on a Mad Lib beat. It is so blown out, but uh, visceral and enjoyable because of just how loud and, and blasted it is. <laughs> Along with this, we have what sounds like some vocal samples from some piece of vintage 60s psych rock with uh, some orbiting, glossy, atmospheric tones surrounding all of it that I imagine might be coming by way of Fortet, as they seem to be a very common reoccurrence on many of these tracks, and would absolutely be something he would work into a piece of his own. But overall, this track features just incredible grooves, a variety of textures, and this is also the case for a lot of the subsequent songs here. Theme to Crabtree has some awesome head-nodding kicks, jangling percussion, gentle dreamy keys. The whole thing is so incredibly entrancing, I just love the combination of soft tones and concrete grooves. Then, Road of the Lonely Ones. Damn, the soul samples on this! Those falsetto leads, the harmonies, and I love the way some of them are chopped up and looped very quietly in the background so they create a bit of an eerie drone. This track is very much foundationally based on some Mad Lib and Hip Hop fundamentals, but they're taken to a very sad and surreal place. The track Loose Goose is an interesting one as the beat is packed with these very persistent honking tones from what sounds like a sax, but also maybe some kazoos or something. I really have no idea, but it's a, a very buzzy texture. Easily one of the most chaotic and oddly grooved tracks here, but it's nowhere near as strange as Dirt Knock. With its chunky beats, subdued bass line, and bare lead vocals, it seems like Mad Lib is doing his own take on some trip-hop fundamentals here. Very Portis head, very tricky, but with a creaky, minimal twist. From here, I wouldn't say the quality of the record drops off completely, but I do think it begins to wane a little bit. There's the track Hop Rock, which the more I listen to it, the more I feel the extended voicemail intro wears out its welcome. It takes up pretty much a third of the track. Then the beat that busts in immediately after this portion might be one of the more mild in the bunch here. Individually, the track does have a lot of cool elements going for it. They're all a assembled well, but there's no one piece of sound really standing out and taking the lead, in my opinion. Rhythmically and melodically, Rhythm Chant seems almost like a spacious inverse of Mad Lib's classic Figaro beat from the Mad Villainy record. Then the title track juxtaposes what feels like two separate passages of sound, one being this extended tribal rhythm section while the other is this spacious and improvised piece of spiritual jazz, both of which are impressive in that Mad Lib can pull it off, and it's pretty clear also that he's trying to make this connection between these two separate uh, sounds and genres and how they both connect to a higher power spiritually. But having said that, does Mad Lib put his own spin on these sounds? Not really, and do these two separate sections flow together cogently 
also not really. One for Cortabe also gives off classic Mad Villain vibes. Demented woodwind samples, sinister organs, and some really hard, grooving, funky drums and bass. Really, I'm just waiting for some samples about people uh, talking about villains and evildoers to fly in. Then there is the final leg of this LP, which I see to be a bit of a mixed bag. The Latin number Mad Lib throws in feels almost a little bit too bare for this project. While the guitars and drums on the track are nice, there's no bass or keys to really fill things out. It just ends up feeling a little half-baked. Meanwhile, Hangout, The New Normal, and Chino are a few of the biggest duds on the project, in my opinion. Sonically and compositionally, some of the more, I guess, average or humdrum spots on the project. Nowhere near as daring or as evocative as anything in the first six or seven tracks. The samples and rhythms mostly feel like Mad Lib by the numbers at this point, but maybe with a slight increase in atmosphere. There is, though, a very creative use of delay and soul chops on the song Two for Two for Dilla, which are are just spectacular, one of the most instant earworms on the entire project. And for what it is, I suppose the closer is interesting. We have some very rough vintage vocal samples singing over jazz keys, busy rhythms, as well as some very subtle and watery lead melodies too that are pretty faint. There's not much direction to it, but I suppose it is a vibe and, I don't know, a stark contrast in a somewhat disappointing way from the intro and the first portion of the album, which honestly sounded like larger than life, like we were going to be subjected to something almost like an interdimensional cosmogramma-like experience. Something truly mind-bending, and again, for the first portion of this project, it really delivered. But in the end, I think Sound Ancestors trailed off into a series of tracks that were a lot more predictable and familiar and average for Mad Lib, which of course across the board is above average in general, but still less than I was expecting considering how good the project started off. Feeling a decent too strong seven on this one, Tran. Zishin, have you given this album a listen? Did you love it? Did you hate it? What would you rate it? You're the best. You're the best. What should I review next? Hit the like if you like. Please subscribe and please don't cry. Hit the bell as well. Over here next to my head is another video that you can check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel, Anthony Fantano, Madlib, the forever.